لهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إقرارا به وتوحيدا وأشهد أن محمدا عبد ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما مزيدا أما بعد احذروا من شياطين الإنس بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Be cautious of the shayateen amongst the humans. يعني هذا يدرس الآن هنا. So this one he's studying right now. درسنا ولله الحمد كتاب التوحيد. And we studied والحمد لله كتاب التوحيد. نعم دراسة مختصرة. Even though it was ما في إشكال. Even though it was a concise explanation, but there's no problem. أول مرة يدرس فيها ما يمكن يدرس دراسة مطولة. The first time a person studies Kitab al-Tawheed, it cannot be a detailed explanation. And similarly, when it comes to fiqh, there's no problem in studying fiqh firstly summarized. And a shaitan comes to a person and says, what do you benefit from studying fiqh like this? We don't require this fiqh. ونحن كذا كلمة واحدة أو يقول ابن سعدي الله يرحمه الله يرحمه مات. or a person says regarding a sheikh al-Saadi he's died may Allah mercy upon him. فأنت لا لا تستطيع تقرأ بعد هذا الكتاب صح أو لا؟ إذا إخواننا في شياطين الذي لا يدرس يريدك أنت لا تدرس. so there are some shayatin amongst the humans they themselves do not study and neither do they desire for you to study. أو قالنا قال نشرب نذهب نشرب كوفي. Um, let's go drink coffee. والدرس قال مسجل ما في مشكلة. As for the lesson, it's recorded. Don't worry about the lesson. صحيح؟ لا يا أخي هذه أيام يومين ثلاثة بعضكم قال نريد الدرس وكذا وعندما بدأنا الدرس وبدأنا الدورة يعني هذا مشكلة. صح؟ So this Dora is only for two or three days and many of you, you wanted the lessons, you wanted the Sheikh to visit and now that the lesson begins, then problems. <clears throat> Do you think that a Sheikh Ibn Uthameen rahimahullah used to play? أكمل كتاب فبن سعدي فرح بن عثيمين أعطاه جائزة مو خمسين باوند لا أعطاه تفاحة في القصيم لا يعرف التفاح الشيخ ابن عثيمين رحمه الله he completed the study of a whole book with his sheikh sheikh السعدي and when he completed the whole book with him alone studying the book sheikh السعدي he became happy and so he gave him a gift and he didn't give him 50 pounds, rather he gave him an apple. Because an apple in Qasim in those days was rare. And it was something expensive and precious. So a Sheikh Ibn Uthameen, rahimullah, he took this apple and he went to his house. And he's looking at the apple and he doesn't know what to do with the apple. Is it consumed or is it cooked? He does not know. So he came back to a Sheikh Saadi and he said, Look, this, this, what, what do I do with this? Because Ibn Uthameen, he did not know playing. And do you, not, do you think that the shayateen amongst the humans did not come to a Sheikh Ibn Uthameen and try to doubt him? Place doubts regarding the books of a Sheikh Sa'adi? We studied al wudu and al ghusl and al tayammum. Al ma yanqasim ila qismi. Tahuru najis fakat. And then there are two types of water. Either it is pure or impure. الماء الذي باقي على خلقته باقي على أصله نزل من السماء ماء المطر أو مياه الآبار العيون الأنهار نعم هذا طهور نعم. The نعم. water which is pure is that water which remains in its original natural state whether it is water which descends from the skies as rain or water from springs and fountains or water in rivers any type of any water which is in its natural state, this is pure. فلا يمكن 
أننا نحكم عليه بالنجاسة إلا إذا تغير. And therefore, we cannot consider it to be impure unless that water changes. تغير إما بالرائحة. Either its smell changes أو باللون or its color changes أو بالذوق لكن تغير بنجاسة لكن تغير نزل فيه ورق ما في إشكال ورق شجر or its taste changes and we consider it to be impure when any one of these three qualities change due to an impurity as for one of its these qualities changing with something which is pure like for example with نزل فيه ورق الشجر Now, for example, if uh, leaves of a tree fell into the water, this does not make it najas. لا إشكال. طيب. اختلفنا أنا والشيخ أبو العباس فيما عندنا. أنا قل طهور هو يقول نجس. الحق مع من؟ So if me and Abu Abbas, if we differed regarding the state of this water, I say that it is impure. I say that it is pure, and he says that it is impure. Who is right? معي معي. لابد نعم نعم the sheikh is right always لماذا why لأن هذا الأصل because هذا يدعي خلاف الأصل هو الذي يطالب بالدليل يقول تغير لون أو طعم أو ريح وإلا الأصل الطهارة because the أصل the base default ruling with regards to what is purity and therefore the one who says that it is impure he is demanded to bring proof نعم طيب أيضا عندنا السواك And also we have the siwak. The siwak is the siwak by the arak or any siwak that is not a siwak and not a siwak. Yes, it is not a siwak in the palm. There is no benefit if it is not a siwak in the palm. Yes. And siwak is the stick which is from the root of the tree or the plant or any other type of matter or any other thing by which a person is able to clean his mouth and it does not damage his his mouth. نعم يستحب السواك بل السواك سنة مؤكدة في كل وقت. And and neither does the siwak break by merely brushing the teeth. This is called a siwak. نعم السواك ما هو سنة. سنة مؤكدة بل عندنا حديث أن السواك مرضاة للرب. And using a siwak is an emphasized sunnah. In fact, it is so emphasized that we have with us a hadith that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned that using the siwak pleases Allah. السواك يستحب في كل وقت. And so, using the siwak, are you brushing the teeth? It is recommended and encouraged in every time. للصائم وغير الصائم. Whether a person is fasting or not. عند الوضوء. When making wudu. عند الصلاة. Before salah. عند قراءة القرآن. Before reciting Quran. قيام الليل. Before قيام الليل. دخول المنزل. When a person enters the house. تغير رائحة الفم. In order to change the odor which is emanating from the mouth. عند الموت. And also before death. كيف عند الموت؟ How before death? Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam, قبل الموت استاك. Because the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, before he passed away, he used the miswak. He brushed his teeth. هذا الدين الإسلامي دين يحث على النظافة على الطهارة على الآداب على الأخلاق لا يوجد مثل هذا الدين. And this shows and indicates that this religion of Islam, it encourages us with hygiene and cleanliness and good etiquettes and good practices. And therefore, there is no religion like the religion of Islam. ومن الآداب آداب قضاء الحاجة. And also from the etiquettes or the good practices of Islam is that which pertains to answering the call of nature. يجب أن يستتر عن أعين الناس حال قضاء الحاجة وجوبا. Firstly, it is an obligation for a person when urinating. That he is far removed and concealed from the sight of the people. يغلق الباب مثلاً. For example, closing the door. وإذا كان في الفضاء شجرة سيارة جدار أو يبعد. نعم. Or if he is in an open space, hiding behind a tree or a stone, or being far away from the people. لا يدخل إلى الحمام بشيء في ذكر الله المصاحف القرآن كتب العلم. And from the etiquettes is that a person does not enter into the lavatories with anything which contains the name of Allah like the Quran or the Mus'haf. 
Also, when a person enters into that place, then he is obligated to stop mentioning the name of Allah. And neither does he converse or have any normal speech. And also, before a person enters into the toilets, he says, in the name of Allah, and then he says, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-khubthi wal-khaba'ith. Naam. Wa idha kharaja, idha dakhal yuqaddim al-rijl al-yusra, wa idha kharaja yuqaddim al-rijl al-yumna, wa qul ghufranak ba'da an yakhruj. Naam. And when he enters the toilet, he enters with his left foot, and when he exits from the toilet, he exits with his right foot. And after he has exited, he seeks forgiveness by saying غفرانك. لا يستقبل القبلة ولا يستدبرها. And also when urinating uh, or answering the call of nature, neither does he face the qibla with his front, nor does he give his back to the qibla. لا يقضي الحاجة في أماكن يؤذي الناس فيه الناس ولو كانوا كفار ولو كانوا أهل بدع. And from the etiquettes of answering the call of nature, that he does not do so in any place or path which would harm others, whether they are non-Muslims or the people of innovation. Also, a person is not permitted to urinate in still standing water. And he does not touch his private parts with his right hand. And he is permitted to urinate standing up but with two conditions. That firstly, the droplets of urine do not splash back onto him or his clothing. And also that his aura or his private parts are not exposed in front of others. So when a person has finished answering the call of nature, and then after this, a person has to cleanse that place from which the impurity was discharged. And this is done either through water or stones, handkerchiefs, leaves or tissue. As for cleansing and purifying using water, this is clear. As for cleansing oneself using tissue, papers or handkerchiefs, there are certain conditions. The first condition is that this itself has to be pure. And also... The, the paper which you are using to cleanse yourself, it cannot be something which is يعني, respectable, meaning it cannot be a book or knowledge or musaf. And neither is a person permitted to use anything which is food of humans or beings or the animals of humans and jinn. نعم. تمام. ولا بد أن تكون ثلاثة مناديل أقل شيء إلا إذا كان المنديل كبير مثلا له أن يمسح هنا مرة هنا مرة هنا أو حجر كبير لكن يمسح هنا مرة واحد أصبح هذا المنديل نجس لا بد يغيره نعم and a person has to wipe himself three times either he uses three separate pieces of tissue or if it's a long piece of paper or handkerchief then he can use different parts three times as for when a person cleanses himself once, then that part it has now become najas. And same with a stone. So the minimum amount of wipes that a person must wipe his private parts with is three. And if on this third time, the paper is dry, meaning there's no najasa and there's no wetness, then a person can stop. The person has considered or considers his private parts to be clean. However, if after the third time, there's st still some wetness of urine or there's some najasa from one's feces, then he continues until the paper or the handkerchief is dry. Now, if it's 
مساحات ستة حجارة ستة مناديل يستحب له أن يزيد حتى ينقطع على عدد زوجي فردي لا زوجي نعم and if a person has finished wiping himself for example with six wipes or six stones or six handkerchiefs then it's recommended for a person to stop on an odd number not an even number so he does it one more time لا يوسوس لا يوسوس نعم and also a person should not be affected by paranoia نعم الحيض والنفاس بس اشرح يوسف نعم اشرح شو يوسوس يوسوس يعني وسوس من الشيطان يعني الشيطان يقول له ما حصل الطهارة بعض الناس يبقى في الحمام أحيانا ساعة يقفز نعم A person after having purified himself should not be affected by paranoia Some people they'll remain in the toilet cleansing themselves for a whole hour and this is all paranoia from shaytan يستعمل مئة بنديل A person might have wiped himself with a hundred different tissues ما كثير a lot of water. يلف حول المسجد. نعم يلف يدور حول المسجد لأنه يعتقد إنه بعد خروجه من الحمام ينزل شيء لكن بعد ربع ساعة. And then after 15 minutes he might return back to the masjid. And then after another 15 minutes he returns back to the masjid because he believes every time he has left that area and cleansed himself he is impure. يظن إنه به سلس بول وهو ما فيه إلا العافية. And he thinks that he is ill because of droplets of urine, and there's nothing wrong with him. From, enter isna ali amrak Allah. So you have to do that which Allah commanded you to do. Ya khur khurj salli. After you have purified yourself, come and pray. Ma had qal lak taqfis fil hammam aw taluf. Nobody said that you have to jump in the toilet or go around the masjid. Yaqul. أنا متيقن مئة بالمئة أنه تنزل نقطة بول وهو يظن أنه هذا هو سلس البول هذا ليس بسلس بول نعم So if a person says that I am certain 100% that a droplet of urine was discharged This is not that, that illness in which there is a continuous discharge of urine هذا ممكن أثر غسل الغسل بالماء this sometimes is an effect of washing with water. So don't be affected by paranoia. Sheikh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah he said that tiny amounts of nijasa are overlooked, forgiven. And in any case, this paranoia is from shaitan. And then after this, we come to hate which are the menses. أعلم النساء بها أعلم الناس بهذا الباب النساء. نعم. And hate menses are the periodic bleeding of women. The most knowing of people regarding this are the women. المرأة أي مرأة تسأل مثلا عن الحيض ماذا نقول لها نعم. If a woman asks or questions regarding hate, how do we answer? نقول لها هل لك أيام معلومة دائما تأتي مثل ستة أيام وسبع أيام إذا قالت نعم نقول تمام تبقي هذا الستة أيام أو السبع أيام وبعد هذا لو نزل دم هذا استحابة نعم so if a woman asks about her bleeding you say to her do you know of your regular periods meaning do you have regular periods in which you bleed for example five or six days at a particular time so if she says yes I know it, then we say, okay, for these five or six days, you consider yourself to be in a state of hayth, of menses, and then anything in addition this, to this, it is continuous bleeding. Tamam. It's the hadha. أي مرأة تأتينا نسألها عندك أيام معلومة إذا قالت نعم نقول أنت في الشرع لها اسم وهي معتادة يعني لها عادة معلومة تبقى هذه العادة وما زاد عنها فهو استحاضة تمام نعم So any woman who comes and she is unsure about the rulings of al-hayth, you answer her, do you know when you have your regular periods? And if it is known, like those six days, for example, then according to the sharia, for that known time, she is considered to be impure due to her menses. And anything which is in addition to this, then this is istihada. This is regular uh, bleeding. And that woman 
who knows of a period of, of, of her hayd, then she's known as mu'tada, meaning a woman whose bleeding is regular. Ja'atna mar'a. A woman came. قالت, and she asked you, and you replied that, do you know the days of your bleeding? She said, no. دم طيلة الشهر. Sometimes for the whole month there is bleeding. نقول طيب. هل أنت مميزة تميز تفرق بين دم الحيض ودم العادي الجرح مثلا؟ Then she is asked that are you able to recognize and different or and distinguish between the blood of the menses and normal bleeding? Like for example, if there is a cut and there is blood. Are you able to distinguish between the two types of blood? And if she says, yes, I can distinguish between both. And so then the answer is that as long as you are able to distinguish between the different types of blood, then that blood which you consider to be hayd, for those days you are in a state of impurity. And as for the other days in which the bleeding and the blood is not the blood of the menses, through that which you can recognize, then this is normal bleeding, and we will come to the rulings of al-istihada, that she can pray in this time. Tamam. Ja'atna mar'a, thalitha. And then, hadi mumayyiza. Hadi thani mumayyiza, naam. And this woman, she's called mumayyiza, meaning, a, a woman who can distinguish between the two types of blood. And then a third woman approaches. And she questions regarding her menses and you say to her, Do you know your regular period of bleeding? She says no. Are you able to distinguish between the bleeding of the menses and the blood which is normal? She says no. And the terminology which is given to her by the Sharia is that she is mutahayyira, meaning she's in a state of confusion. She herself is in a state of confusion and we are confused along with her. ماذا تصنع? So what does she do? تبحث عن أختها, عن أمها, عن خالتها, بنت خالتها, وتنظر كم الأيام عندهم. سبعة أيام, إذن هي تبقى سبعة أيام مثلهم في الحيض والباق استحاضة. She uh, looks at her mother or her sisters or her niece for example and she follows them so if so if, if one of them or some of them if they bleeding is for example five, for five or six days then she considers these days of bleeding to be hayd, menses and impurity and the remaining days she is in istihada man hadath asghar yahrum ma'da من عليه حدث أصغر يعني خرج منه ريح ولم يتوضأ هذا يحرم عليه أن يصلي. A person who is in a state of minor impurity, which things are forbidden for that person? So firstly, for example, a person who has passed wind, which things are forbidden for that person? He cannot pray. He or she cannot pray. لا يصلي ولا يطوف. Neither are they allowed to perform tawaf around the Kaaba. ولا يمس المصحف. And neither are they allowed to touch the Mus'haf. As for the one who is in a state of major impurity, then he or she is not permitted to perform these previous three, meaning no salah and no tawaf and neither touching the Mus'haf. And neither the recitation of the Qur'an. And neither is that person permitted to remain in the masjid without performing wudu. And as for the women who are in a state of impurity due to their menses or due to postnatal bleeding, then all of these matters, meaning she does not pray salah, neither does she make tawaf, nor does she touch the mushaf. Neither does she enter and remain in the masjid. ولا تصوم. Neither does she fast. ولا تطلق. No, is she divorced. ولا توطع. Neither is our intimate relations permitted with her. ولاها أن تقرأ القرآن. 
but she's permitted to recite the Quran. But that is without directly touching the Mus'haf. But it's permitted for her to take a cloth or a stick and she can turn the pages. And this is a view of Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimullah that a woman in a state of major impurity due to hayth or a nifas postnatal bleeding is not prevented from reciting the Quran. As for wiping over leather socks or fabric socks, fabric footwear. The first condition which permits this is that a person has to have worn that footwear after making a complete wudu including the washing of the feet. And then the fabric socks have to be uh, pure and not impure. And then thirdly, that the footwear you are wearing has to cover the majority of your foot. So for example, those socks which don't reach to the ankles Sheikh Ibn Uthameen rahimullah, his view was that you can make mash over them. And you can make mash over them because they are still covering the majority of the foot. The next condition of al mash al khufain is that it is done due to minor impurity but not major impurity. And it has to be done, or al masih al khufin has to be done within the legislated period of time, meaning for the one who is resident, 24 hours, i.e. the passing of a night and a day, and a day, and the one who is traveling, 72 hours, meaning the passing of three nights and three days. Now, طيب, al masih ala al jabira, al jabira. يعني يضعها على يده في إذا كان في عنده كسر الله عافينا وياكم نعم and then wiping over casts so the cast is that which is placed over a bone which has been broken may Allah save us and you نعم الآن مثلا إنسان على يده جبيرة so if a person is wearing a cast أراد يتوضأ and then intends to perform wudu نقول لابد تزيل هذه وتتوضأ تغسل يديك لابد do you say to that person that without doubt you have to remove your cast and you have to wash the body part? And the person says, I'm not able to do so. Then we say to the person, you are permitted to wipe over the cast. So if he is able to wipe over, then he wipes over. Another person has an open cut or an open wound. No. He has to wash when performing wudu. If he says, I'm not able to do so, then we say, wipe over it. And if he's not able to wipe over, meaning with wet hands, because even a droplet of water will injure him, says, I'm not even able to place my hand over the open wound. What does he do? He performs a full wudu but without washing the arm. And once he has finished from the wudu, and then he makes intention in his heart, he verbalizes the name of Allah on his tongue, and then he places his hands once upon the earth, wipes over his face, and then the back of his right hand, and then the back of his left hand. So this tayammum is in place of him not even wiping over the نعم طيب عندنا أيضا المرأة تمسح على الخمار يعني تعرف أنت تأتي الآن خاصة أيام البرد وكذا إلى المسجد تمسح على خماري نعم مسح نعم. and also it is permitted for a woman to wipe over her headscarf because you know especially in this time for example in the winter it's difficult for her to remove her headscarf so she can wipe over her headscarf نعم 
هنا يذكر الفقهاء الآنية الأواني لماذا؟ لأن الماء جوهر سيال يحتاج إلى أواني فيصح أن يستعمل كل الأواني الأصل فيها الطهارة حتى لو جاءت من الصين أو من كذا نعم And then here the ulama they speak about the rulings of using utensils And why do they speak about utensils in the chapter of purification? Because water it's a liquid and therefore a liquid it requires a container and these containers are the utensils so the asal the base default ruling when it comes to utensils is that they are pure even if they come from china or from any other muslim if they are the utensils of the non muslims then the asal is that they are pure except utensils which have been manufactured from gold or silver they are not permitted to be used so what is the ruling of using utensils from the kuffar are they tahir pure or impure three types firstly if we know that they are pure then they are pure أن نعلم نجاستها فهي نجسة لا بد تغسل مثلا وضعوا فيها خنزير. If we know that those utensils are impure because they have been utilized for something which is impure, like for example a container of of خنزير of swine, then they are then they are washed. نعم. And then they are pure. تمام. نشك لا ندري. And then the third situation is that we are in doubt. We don't know whether they are pure or impure. الأصل إيش؟ Then we go back to the base default ruling. الطهارة. And that is that they are pure. تمام. إزالة النجاسة. And then after this, the removal of physical impurities. إزالة النجاسة على ثلاثة أقسام. كيف نزيل النجاسة؟ So there are three ways of purifying and removing an impure, a physical impurity. الكلب كرمكم الله. إذا ولغ يعني شرب ما يشرب إلا بإخراج اللسان فإذا ولغ في الإناء لابد إراقة جميع ما في الإناء والمرة الأولى بالتراب ثم الثانية والثالثة والرابعة والخامسة والسادسة والسابعة ماء تضع ماء وتريق ماء حتى حت الكل سبعة نعم so firstly if the najasa, if the physical impurity is from a dog, akramakumullah, such that the dog licks or drinks from the utensil, and a dog only drinks from the utensil by using his tongue and the saliva of the dog, then how does purification occur? Firstly, you have to spill everything which was contained in the utensil. Naam. And then secondly, you have, to, you have to clean it with soil. And then after cleansing it with soil, then there are seven. Then it is washed seven times with water. Athani, the second type of najasa. Al madhi, ma huwa? Al madhi, and what is al madhi? Sa'il ليس له لون مثل الماء. So al madhi is a is a discharge liquid which has no color. It's transparent like water. يخرج عند التفكير عند التقبيل نعم. And this. Madhi, it is discharged due to a thought based upon desires or an action based upon desires. Naqad lil wudu. And this, and like kissing, and this invalidates a person's wudu. La bud an yaghsil al-dhakar wal-baydatayn khuswatayn hatta yanqatir al-khuroosh. Naam. And a person has to wash his frontal private part and the testicles so we are sure that it is clean. Nazala ala al-thawb. If a person's if a madhi it soils a person's clothing what do i do you take water and you uh, spray or sprinkle on the cloth and this is sufficient and there is no najas so it invalidates a person's wudu so you have to repeat wudu and you have to wash your private part and the area around that. But when it comes to the thaw, you sprinkle water on it. Rush فقط. I'm just sprinkling. طيب. هذا الأستاذ دخل الآن لدورة المياه. So this person, this teacher, he entered into the lavatories. في دورة المياه جاءت نقطة من البول على ثوبه. And whilst he was there, a droplet of urine it soiled his clothes. ماذا يصنع؟ what does he do? He takes the clothing. He takes the piece of cloth where there is the droplet of urine and he sprinkles water on it. 
and then he squeezes it out and now it is pure and he doesn't need to go to his house and take off his tobe and change it and wash it why because the religion is easy so there are three ways of purifying from impurities firstly the impurity of a dog and this is seven times the first with soil and then after this which is that discharge based upon desires and this is sprinkling over it and then the other remaining physical impurities by sprinkling water over it and then squeezing the water out so alhamdulillah we have studied kitab al-tahara and we mentioned that a person begins with the purification of his inner self and then, after, and then after this his out self and as for the tahara which is apparent and physical this is the tahara from al-hadath and physical impurities and we said that the states of hadath or the states of impurity are major and minor and as for purifying yourself from the physical impurities and this is your clothing and your body and the area which you are worshipping Allah as for your clothing then sprinkling water over it and then squeezing the water out Apart from al-madhi, it only requires sprinkling. As for utensils, then seven times of cleansing, the first of which is with soil. We also studied al-hayd. And similar to this is postnatal bleeding. As for al-istihadha, which is continuous bleeding after the uh, bleeding of the menses then a woman prays and as for semen it is not impure why because semen is the substance from which human was created and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if his clothing was soiled with semen, if it was still wet, then he would sprinkle water over it. No. And if it had become dry, then he would scrub it off. Uh, المغرب المغرب بالطاعة. نأخذ كتاب نراجع ونأخذ كتاب الصلاة والله أعلم صلى الله على النبي محمد وعلى صحبه وسلم وجزاكم الله خيرا